Welcome to The Grap Up for July 2023, your monthly blast of cold takes on the world of professional wrestling, available everywhere good podcasts are sold. I'm the Intrepid Traveller, I am Mark Robinson, with me as always, he is the editor over at The Wrestling Observer, he is Brian Rose, the man who handles earthquakes like no one's business, uh, John Tenter represent. Brian, how yeah, are you doing? I'm doing fine, just... Uh... Another busy weekend ahead, and uh, we've just gone through a bunch of busy weekends, and there will be probably more busy weekends until <laughs> the end of time. Uh, I mean, they're still all in later this month. We're now in August, so it's, yeah. it's that time. SummerSlam well, is this uh, Sunday, Saturday, I think. Can, can I just say, can I just start off by saying that uh, someone, it, my my uh, my girlfriend's nephew, who's staying with us at the moment, he came to me the other day and he was like, hey, do you want to watch SummerSlam this weekend? And my first response was, wait, what the fuck? SummerSlam is this weekend. Because in my <laughs> mind, I've always attributed to SummerSlam being yeah. like later it's in like August. It's like late in the month. It usually, usually when growing up, it was like the day before school started. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether that like... I feel like they've had um, this show kind of booked for a while at least, so I don't think this was a response to All In, but it still yeah, this, surprised this me was, that it's so it, early. Last year, it was like July 30th, which I never heard of a July SummerSlam, but yeah, they've been keeping it early for some reason. Yeah, Probably because they want to go head-to-head with All Out. I think there's a show. Might be a... Is there, are they running a show that weekend? Maybe Payback or whatever it's called? Fast I have no goddamn idea at this I, point. I think that might be why. Because they, they, they are targeting uh, All Out. Right. They've been targeting that for the last few years. But they don't consider them competition. No. Virtually. No. Yeah. It's, it's, very, it's just a coincidence that their their shows are the same weekend as AEW shows. It's, yeah. it's just a coincidence. But how are you? Like before we get into the, the boring stuff, how are you? How how's your month been? Uh it's just been busy with a bunch of stuff. Um just I think my life is wrestling. <laughs> like I haven't really even played actually I have played something, but I can't talk about it until the embargo drops on Monday. Oh. So um that I can't talk about right now, but Beyond that, I haven't even played anything. I just, you know, when there's not wrestling going on, I'm just watching like Turner Classic movies and stuff. And uh, it's a good palate cleanser. Like that. Yeah, that's a very good palate cleanser. So yeah. I, I just, there's not much going on besides wrestling right now. It's staying inside. It's it's super hot. It's 115 in most days. Maybe a little bit lower. Maybe a little bit higher. Yeah, I um, so obviously on our side in Europe, um, we've been dealing with some intense heat waves uh, sort of around like southern Europe and the Mediterranean. I have been reading. I know that um, in in Arizona, um, they've had some really, really intense yeah, heat Phoenix. waves. Yeah. Like how how bad has it been for you where you guys are? It's about the same thing. I, I mean, I, I hear about what's going on in Phoenix and that and it's like, yeah, that's pretty much here, too. I mean, I'm about six hours away from Phoenix, so I'm kind of close. Um, but yeah, we're out, it's it's all desert stuff. We're all existing in the <laughs> desert, and it's like 115 every day anyway. So uh, I, I, it's it's August, so hopefully it's not it's not like July. July is the worst month. Right. August is kind of there too, but by September it finally starts to cool down. And the winters are nice. That that's why we we get so many. Uh, I think the, the term is snowbirds, where they'll they'll come over and uh, stay for December and January and February, and then leave around March, April. Because by by May it starts to get hot. Yeah, I mean the the only good months are like October through April. All right. So. Yeah, like for for us. Um, you know, I know that a lot of people attribute um, Ireland and, and England to 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 rainy type style yeah. weather. But yeah. even by what like you would kind of naturally presume, it's been that much worse in terms of the amount of rainfall we've had over the past two months. Um, and it's been really kind of schizophrenic as well, because, you know, you, you'll see outside and it's quite sunny. And we're like, all right, you know, we can go for a walk. And then within half an hour, like we've had torrential down downpours. That's like and this monsoon, is just, monsoon but this is just, weather. 
this is just like a five minute walk across to where our park is. Like, you know, yeah. I have a park that I go and do two laps around most days, but I can't even risk that, that sort of half an hour, 40 minute walk without um, taking an umbrella. Um, but, you know, it's I would rather that than than the the intense heat waves that you guys and, and uh, Italy and, and other places are having at the moment. So, I would so love that. rain. I would yeah, love rain. I'm sure you would. It does not <laughs> rain often. Maybe once or twice, uh, I won't say a year, but it's like a handful of times a year where it actually rains here and there's actually like a good amount of rain. Yeah. Anyway, let's let's not. This is not a podcast about the weather. This is a podcast no. about professional wrestling. It is. We are going to jump straight in. Uh, SummerSlam, as mentioned, it is this weekend, August 5th from Ford Field. In Detroit, Michigan, the home of WrestleMania 23 or WrestleMania Car. Um, actually, no, yeah. they, they were still numbering them at the time. Yeah, um, yeah this is uh, this is a big old stadium show. Uh, you know, the the big shows they've been doing them at stadiums uh, last year. Uh, last year, SummerSlam was the was it the the Nissan Stadium in Nashville, Tennessee? Uh, something like that. Something like Nashville. that. Yeah. Uh, the match with the tractor and Brock Lesnar. Yeah. 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 A forklift. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and I honestly, if you tried to get me to name more than about two or three matches on the show, I would have struggled. Um, I'm not watching, you know, Raw and SmackDown on a weekly basis, um, taking in everything that they have to offer. Uh, I do jump in for anything that is pivotal. Pivotal. Um, I feel like Raw and SmackDown, for what I have seen, has been all right. Um, I wouldn't say that I will watch anything and I'm like, I hate this. Um, I think that the product at this moment, while I have the the normal transgressions around like the way the camera and the production is and yeah. uh, the the commentary being a little bit too uh, either generic or, or manufactured, I think the product is still in a better place than it was, say, like two years ago. Um, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. way better than before Vince retired. Uh, the thing is now you can definitely see that there is a change, though. Uh, it's it's like a hybrid to me, in my opinion, of like uh, Triple H's stuff and Vince McMahon's stuff because there's a lot more heat on these shows now than there were even a few months ago. There's a lot of segments where baby faces just get beat up uh, for like ten minutes straight. Uh, there's a lot of crappy finishes. There's a lot more crappy finishes now than there were was a few months ago. Uh, but at the same time, there's good promo videos. I think the videos have actually been very strong in recent weeks. There was a really good Ronda Rousey, Shayna Baszler one on Raw Monday, which I thought was... There's two of them that I thought were very good. Um, there And also there's just a long-term idea of what they want to do. Triple H has a long-term idea with the Judgment Day. They have a long-term idea of what they want to do with the Bloodline. And you're seeing that play out every week. And you're seeing people being focused on. So, I mean, it's it's still way better than it was before Vince McMahon retired. But when he came back and when he started making changes, I, I mean, it's been very like a slow leak of we're kind of getting back to that thing with Vince McMahon's favorite tropes, which is just beating up the baby faces like they're, like they're nothing and these crappy finishes and... Uh, you know, stuff like that. It, it is starting to come back. So I, I think the shows are okay. Sometimes there's like a really good match. Sometimes there's a really good promo or a segment. Sometimes there just isn't. So it's, it's kind of like a hit or miss for me. Like, like Raw is always going to be like three hours of I can't wait for this to end kind of stuff. Yeah. But... Uh, three hours is just too long for a wrestling show, but it's but it's better than it was a year ago, definitely. So looking at this card, uh, we got eight matches announced, which seems surprisingly compact for for SummerSlam. Uh, we yeah. were talking there about um, I think we were talking off air um, about the the sort of kind of length of WWE shows and how they've changed. Uh, to be a little bit more compact recently, especially compared to like the AEW shows. Um, and I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining that we've got eight matches here. Uh, and 
everything looks fairly uh sort of like straightforward for the most part like we haven't got too much chicanery um but we'll get into it first of all we have a slim jim SummerSlam battle royale uh it was announced that wwe had uh, entered into a partnership with slim jim that was a very lucrative deal apparently uh, and so much we have our uh, sponsored battle royale um mm-hmm. as far as of august the 3rd our confirmed participants we have LA Knight, Sheamus, Tommaso Ciampa, Shinsuke Nakamura, Otis, and Chad Gable. Uh, I imagine we'll see a whole bunch more cannon fodder uh, in, yeah. in the ring come Saturday. LA um, Knight should win that, right? Well, it comes down to one of two things. Um, do, because there's nothing sort of confirmed in terms of what the winner gets for this match. Yeah, it's, it's just a battle royal sponsored by Slim Jim. I don't think there's anything online. Yeah, um, because you've got a couple of options here. Um, well, I, I was going to say, like, you could have Sheamus win and then you could kind of rerun the, the Intercontinental Championship thing with Gunther. But they're on different shows, so they probably yeah. can't do that. So, so you're probably right that LA Knight is is the uh, the winner that you want for this. Um, makes the most sense. Yeah. But it's, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I, I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I have been sort of reading over the last week or two about how the company sees LA Knight. And obviously, you know, he is getting one of the louder receptions uh, on any show he's on. And, and there's a fair He's gotten himself over. Yeah. Uh, uh, and it's one of those things that, again, a couple of years ago, that would have probably been a, a death knell for him. But we yeah. are in a different time. So um, the, the one disadvantage that he has is that he is, I think he's like 42. I know he's in his early 40s. Um, which even like by the time that Austin in 96, uh, when he started to kind of come together, I think he was in his late 30s. So he still had a few years on, on what LA Knight has. Not to say that LA Knight is going to reach the the heights of, of Austin, um, but you can make some parallels in terms of being crappy gimmicks, working through that, overcoming the odds and, and you know, really starting to get some very loud uh, kind of positive receptions. Uh, the downside is he's not anywhere near the worker that Steve Austin is. Um, so yeah. it does remain to be seen that if he does get to the point that he ends up in any kind of um, any kind of long term meaningful program, how the actual like work, the wrestling comes from that, because that's where he's really going to have to prove himself. Yeah, I yeah. Come- I, agree. I, I gotta be honest. I gotta be honest. There's not, you know, if you ask me to put together a compilation of the best Eli Drake matches, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna struggle LA, to find five. Yeah, the thing with LA Knight is that he is not like a great wrestler. I don't even think he. I mean, there's always been these comparisons to him of like uh, The Rock, um, Mr. Kennedy. I kind of got that vibe from him. Uh, but you know what? It's gone over. Uh, and you can't argue with something that's gotten over. I mean, you hear the pops that he has when he comes out. And it's like, can't ignore that. You have to, like, go with it. If somebody gets over, you have to go with it. Yeah. That seems like the problem with WWE is that when things get over, instead of trying to find ways to, like, squash it, you just, like, go with it. Like, let the people be happy. <laughs> you yeah. know? The, but, like, the problem... why does it have to be a fight? The, the problem that they have, though, and it's not the worst problem to have, I guess, is that um, if, if Triple H does have a long term vision in terms of Roman and the, the the universal WWE title and, you know, obviously we've got the match with Jay this weekend, you figure that there still is whatever story they're telling with Cody Rhodes. And if they're going to finish that story and where LA Knight would fit into that picture and again, you know, I do bring it up that LA Knight isn't someone that you can build the company around because he is, he is in his early 40s. Yeah. And I do think that if you were in a position where you didn't have this incredibly monumental uh, title reign currently, um, you know, if you have a, a, if you were having someone who was on like a three month reign or a six month reign, you could be in a place where you could say, fuck it, you know, like we'll strike while the iron is hot and put it on LA Knight for a little while and, and run with that for a year or so. But you can't really do that at the moment. You, you know, the, the person that beats Roman, that has to be a, a big fucking deal, you know, and that, yeah. and that person who wins it has to 
be the person to carry the company for the while, and we did think that was going to be Cody at WrestleMania, but here it we might are. be next year. I'm it might be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I I don't know what you do with Knight in the in the meantime. Now you could argue that the uh, fact that he the fact that he's getting these pops that he is at the moment. Uh, you could say that he's in a position currently where he doesn't need a belt. You know, like he no. could. Um, I don't he think could, he needs. He could, to- I think he needs to be WWE champion, but I mean, you can like put him with Austin Theory. See, now <laughs> I was going to say, right. In theory, you would say, all right, look, you can't put the main belt in him, but you can go to the secondary title. Here's yeah. the thing. Here's the thing. I can't see an LA Knight slash Austin Theory match that is like over three stars. Like that, that is the fucking most egregious aggressive gentleman's three star type of match i can think of and i don't know if that would do either of them any favors yeah um i don't know um it's it's it is a very tough position for them because you you want to go with him but like what do you do and it's not an easy answer like the best answer would probably be theory but I don't, I don't know, because like you don't want to put with Gunther, because I don't think, I don't think he should be Gunther. I don't think, I don't know who should be Gunther. It's that's a more of an open-minded question. Um, yeah. And I don't think right now he should be beating either the Judgment Day or or Roman Reigns. So it's, yeah. I I just think you shouldn't like bury him. I think yeah. I think that's it for right now. I, I but, think... like feature him, but not like. He, should, he, he shouldn't have to win the, the top titles to be over. He should just be like a presence and should be winning matches and uh, coming off as a star as opposed to let's give him the Zack Ryder treatment. Yeah. I, I think one thing you could probably do in the meantime, if, if they'd had more types of uh, stipulate or environments like your King of the Rings or even, you know, Survivor Series when that meant to actually mean something. You could probably do things like that. He 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 could win a King of the Ring. He could win a tournament like that. Yeah. He could be the sole survivor of Survivor Series and have those sorts of things to kind of keep that momentum going where, you know, he's winning these big things that aren't title adjacent, or I suppose they are title adjacent, but they're not title specific. Um but yeah, it is is it, what can you do with him in the in the long run that isn't based around the the universal title other than give him a match against roman he loses and then i guess you see if that momentum is still there with him uh you know i guess we'll see what happens who is even yeah. to say that roman will still be the champion by the end of this weekend um but yeah i, I think we're both in agreement la knight is probably winning this then uh the thing is i say possibly but i don't know <laughs> I mean, like, WWE, wwe is hard to predict um I don't know. Uh, you, could, you could go with Sheamus. You can go with somebody else. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> In the long run, I don't think it matters much because I don't think anything is going to come off of it. So, yeah. Uh, next up, we have Ronda Rousey versus Shayna Baszley in an MMA rules match. Uh, the quicker this thing is done and the quicker that we just forget any of this ever happened and this second run of Ronda happened, the sooner we can just go on with our lives. Yeah. Yeah, it, it hasn't clicked for me. Not until the, the promos on Raw. The promos that were on Raw Monday were actually good enough to where I was kind of interested in this match. Which is saying a lot because the build beforehand was not good at all. Yeah. A uh, very rushed. Um, and some of it is beyond their control, but like this second round of Ronda Rousey run, it hasn't been good. She hasn't had a good match. I don't think she's had a good promo. I don't think she's had a good storyline. Nothing's clicked. Not like the first time where some stuff clicked. Um just didn't work out for her this time. And this is probably going to be it for her after Summer Sun, at least for a while. Yeah. So I, I'm guessing Sheena should win because uh, she's going to be here next week and Ronda will probably not be. But I don't know. <laughs> Again, it's like WWE's hard to predict because you think something's going to happen and then they d- it doesn't happen. So I don't know. Yeah, I I just I'm happy for us to move on from this and and just never think about it again. Yeah. 
Uh, something I'm very happy to think about is Gunther versus versus Drew McIntyre in a singles oh. match for the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, Drew McIntyre. It's going to hit hard. Yeah, Drew McIntyre recently returning to the company uh, after a what three four month sabbatical. Um, a yeah. lot of people were thinking that maybe his time in the company was done, that he wasn't going to resign. Um, I he, think he still hasn't resigned yet, but it's, it's, that's kind of up in the air. But I think it was like an injury and creative, a mixture of those two. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I think he'd been in a position where he was probably deserving of a few months off just to kind of rest up. Sure. Uh, Drew is scarily like he is still he's only 38. Um, he feels like he's been around. Well, he has been around forever. Uh, it, it's kind of crazy that he is uh, still on the faulty. Um, yeah, he, he he was called up at like 19. So, yeah, I mean, it's he's been around a while. Yeah, uh, it is one of those things that if he wanted to go and do something else for a while, this is probably the time to do it. Um, but I'm sure I'm, I'm sure WWE uh, have very deep pockets and can make him a very compelling offer. So yeah. Um, it is just about whether you know they can figure out something creative with him. Um, I expect Gunther will win this match. I, I don't feel like Drew yeah. is the person to take the belt from him. Uh, uh, stranger hockey, things have yeah. happened though. The hockey talk man's record needs to be broken. <laughs> <laughs> like there, there's all this stuff about records right now in WWE, and I don't care about a lot of them. But like, you need to beat the honky tonk man's record. <laughs> like. Yeah, where are we actually at in terms of? Uh... It's it's pretty close. He's been champion for over a year. Let me see. Uh, the, uh, and Hockey Talk Man is around 400 days. They they split these up into two things on Wikipedia. Uh, da, 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 da. Is it here? Yeah, here we are. Um, all right, I need to scroll down. Jesus Christ, right here we go. So, Gunther is at 417 days. The Honky Tonk is 453. So, we're... Okay, so a few more months. I would know you. I'd say like a month and a half. I think. <coughs> yeah, it's it's. It would be silly for him to drop the title now. Yeah. What is crazy? Be. It's it's crazy when you look down as well because I'm looking at lists now and you'll see like Chris Jericho has nine reigns, yeah. but between them he only held the thing accumulatively for 311 days. Um, yeah. yeah, it's it's kind of wild how that sort of thing gets put together. But yeah, I, I, I definitely think that um, Gunther will retain, but I would fully expect that these two will go out. And I don't know if they'll I, be able to I, top I, the... I can see McIntyre winning the title, but not this month. I, I think that... Uh, I don't think they'll be able to top the triple threat from WrestleMania, but, you no. know, it, a, a four and three... Do you know what? Maybe they, they could hit, like, a five-star sort of match. You know, if... if Gunther and Sheamus it's could do possible. it. There's no reason Gunther and Drew can't do it. Yeah. So. Definitely. Yeah. It's going to be good. Yeah. 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 Uh, what else? Uh, I fucking deleted my. <laughs> Why did I close that? That was a stupid idea too. Let's let's get back to where we were. Uh, next on the card, Ricochet versus Logan Paul, which feels like this is a match uh, that's been brewing since their spot at the Royal Rumble in January. Um, you know, it's it's a logical thing to do coming off the back of the Money in the Bank, where the two nearly killed each other. <laughs> it was just one of the gnarliest looking spots I've seen in a while. Um, this, it's kind of weird because there's a chance that this could be like the because Logan Paul's had nothing but very very solid singles matches, and yeah. I feel like some people might be kind of thinking, oh, this will be fine. But like Ricochet has been doing this for a long, like the man is a ring general at this point. Yes. You know, th there's no reason this can't be as good as the match he had with Seth at WrestleMania. The only thing is going to be the crowd investment and the fact that Ricochet as a personality, personality and as a character doesn't have yeah. that, that crowd. He's connection not as investment. strong as a character as Seth Rollins. Yeah. Um, so that is, <laughs> That is the one thing going against him and for this match, but I think that like sheer athleticism will see this thing through to the other side. So I'm not yeah. worried about that. I agree. Uh, just pure athleticism. I think this should be a really good match. Ricochet is not the Ricochet from the independent scene, but he's still very good and can be very good when given the opportunity. Logan Paul is one of the best uh, 
one of the best rookies I've ever seen, to be quite honest. I mean, I, I still think about that match with Roman Reigns in uh, Saudi Arabia. And I, I mean, when put in a position like this, he usually delivers. This is going to be a good match. I, I don't see how it could be a bad match. Yeah. Uh, who do you think goes over, though? That's that's the big thing. Probably Logan Paul. You think? I think. Like, I kind of surprised. I, I just think, like, who do they want to push more? And I'm probably thinking Logan Paul. <laughs> mm. I don't, I don't, I, 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 Ricochet could win. But, uh, I think they're going to give Logan Paul a win because he's done jobs in the past, and it's probably time for him to get like a win on a big show. I would that way love... you can push uh, something for the fall for the next Saudi Arabia show. I, I would love to see Logan Paul get the win here and then just get absolutely fucking murdered by Gunther. In, <laughs> yeah, like, a nine-minute match. Yeah, that'd be great. That can be good. That can happen. Yeah, because uh, I think he'll be back for Saudi Arabia, which will pro- is probably in like in a few months, maybe November. Yeah, they've got that. They've got the the India Super Show as well, and the so India like. Super. But I think that's a house show. Is it? I I, uh, I was under the impression it was a house show. Yeah. Okay. So fair I don't enough. know. I didn't look. Uh, it's not like too. a. It's not like a live pay per view event. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Didn't mind then. Um, we'll save Roman and Jay till last. So uh, we got Asuka, Charlotte Flair, and Bianca Belair uh, in a triple threat for the WWE Women's Championship. This has I mean, done this, nothing for me. Yeah, this is just a coin flip. You know, I'm sure yeah, it'll be it's... fine, but it doesn't matter. I have not liked the build to this match. I don't think Asuka and Bianca have had good matches. They've had okay matches. I don't think they've had like really great matches like like I would expect them to have. Charlotte is is really good, but like, I don't know. I haven't been digging this feud at all. That it's just kind of like a lot of DQ finishes and interruptions and brawls. It's like not doing anything for me. Yeah, is is not related to this match, but is Rhea Ripley injured at the moment? I don't know. They're really hesitant about putting her in matches. Yeah. Well, like uh, she, she's a strong presence on TV. I think she's really solidified that in the last month because that Judgment Day is a really hot act. But she hasn't really wrestled a lot. Like, like she, she wrestled. When was her last match? Like, uh, she, like she, she beat up Natty. Well, there was weeks ago in a really good match. Yeah, there was that. Like the 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 last thing I really properly remember was the the Zelina Vega match at Backlash. Yeah, um, but that was more just because the crowd reception. But it does seem like the the tactic they have with her is to do the Roman Reigns thing, which is just have a rest, wrestle as little as possible, and that yeah. somehow seems to get her more. Well, over. Uh, like it seemed like they're building her and Raquel Rodriguez for this show, but then they kind of made her made Raquel injured. Yeah, and now it's like, well, we'll we'll, we'll give you the 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 match when you're ready. Yeah. And again, like I'm I'm happy with this match to be uh, this card to be eight matches long. So yeah. you're gonna have this. Like there there has to be push and pull. So Yeah, and it's the same yeah. thing with Becky and Trish, but that one it's like they've been building that since the since the day after WrestleMania. Yeah. And now it's just getting bumped to a raw in two weeks. But then you say that, but then they already have already done that match once at the um <coughs> whatever the, the Saudi show was. So it isn't like they haven't already done that match once before, but Anyway. This is the bluff match, though. Yeah, yeah. You would probably want to save that for like an actual like <coughs> premium live event. Um, but I guess SummerSlam isn't going to be it. Um, what we do have though is Seth freaking Rollins versus Finn Balor for the World Heavyweight Championship uh, in a rematch of the match that they had from Money in the Bank. Uh, there's no additional stipulations to this one, which I think is the one thing that's a bit surprising. Um, I thought the Money in the Bank match was perfectly average um it, i don't know whether yeah, it was i expect just... a lot more from them i, I, I don't know whether it was had just... a mid-match yeah i don't know if it was just the, the the traveling that they were just a bit knackered come time to actually do like the money in the bank match or what the Maybe. deal was uh but yeah i just one of the more kind of forgettable title matches that you'll see this year um so i'm hoping the fact that this is a summer slam you know, it's not the first time these two have gone at SummerSlam. The last time they did it was very good, um, even though it did end up with Finn being injured for about nine months afterwards. 
Um, yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm hoping for, for bigger things here. I guess the biggest question is, like, what do you do with Damien Priest? Um, they've obviously been playing up hard that he has the contract and uh, they've really been kind of pushing that part of this dynamic and how he'll get involved. Um, you kind of feel like at some point there's going to be some sort of, like, split to some degree with Judgment Day. Um you know they they've kind of teased that a little bit, but then they've kind of re-solidified the the dynamics between them. Um, it it does feel like there's going to be something very seismic with this. Um, even if like Seth retains, it feels like there'll be something coming out of this with uh, with Finn and Damian Priest for the fall. Uh, that's why I feel at least anyway. Yeah, uh, I can see Finn Balor winning this because I think that Judgment Day. The stable is very hot right now, and you got to strike while the iron is hot, and you should probably put the title on him. Uh, that might contradict with what they want to do between him and uh, Damian Priest, because they've been teasing a split between those two for a few weeks. Um, but I don't know if you want to go with the split just yet, because it's, it's it, again, it's a pretty hot act right now. The r- ratings are up. Uh, NXT ratings are up when Dominic Mysterio is on that show. I mean, yeah. it's very clear that it's a, it's a, that they, they get, they're over. So now the question is, how long do you want to keep that group together before you start teasing a split again? Because they, I guess, until teasing. they get the the uh, NXT renewal money or whatever the the yeah. television like, contracts come up. <laughs> Probably. Um, yeah, I can see Finn winning this. Um, I don't know who else you'd put with Seth after this. So it makes sense for Finn to win. Um, oh, Jesus, what well, what is the Raw roster like these days? Well, who would you put with Seth next? I don't know. Like, who are the top heels beyond um, Judgment Daylight, like uh, Imperium? But uh, like let's... Gunther's Intercontinental Champion. So like, let's have a look. Let's have a look at the Raw roster. Who we got? Who could we? Definitely not going to be a Kira Tozawa. <laughs> no. Uh. Pfft. Do you remember Dexter Loomis is still signed by this country? I have completely forgot he's employed. <laughs> uh, do you remember J.D. McDonough? He had that five-minute feud. He's fallen off the face of the earth. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of slim pickings when you look at it. Jesus. Another thing that I, I, I kind of brought up earlier about Vince McMahon booking is that a lot of the mid card are not on the, the on the on either of these shows anymore. It's focused on a select few people. Yeah, and that was a Vince McMahon thing before he retired, and Triple H started bring back more people. Yeah, but... I, I, I guess maybe you could uh, either Ricochet wins, and then you do Ricochet and Seth, or maybe like Logan wins, and you do Logan and Seth, and do a rematch for me. Yeah, th- those are probably the top options. I guess at a stretch, like Shinsuke wins the Battle Royale, and you do that for, for next Maybe. month. It's just they, like they, a they, of... I guess he's a heel now. <laughs> I, I mean... Is, I have no a, idea. I don't really know. He's he's like involved in a feud with Bronson Reed and Tommaso Ciampa, and Ciampa's been doing a lot of jobs as a voice. So that kind of tells you what they think of him. But Who, who the fuck is Jackie Redmond? She is the interviewer. Oh, I have <laughs> no idea. Um, yeah, like I, you could have even if you'd have fucking actually done an effort in pushing him, you could have done like a, a a one month program of like a Bronson Reed or something and have Seth like overcome kind of a monster type hill. But um, yeah. he's kind of lying, lying in the weeds at the moment. Yeah, they're, they're going to struggle with the fall uh, unless they do like a third match with Finn. But Jesus, uh, if they do that, I think that kind of tells you that they, they have little to work with at the moment. Yeah. All right. Well, that is that. Uh, Cody well, Rhodes. It, it is nice to hear some of those names again because, geez, I, I, <laughs> so many people are not on TV right now. Yeah, and uh, that's not a good sign, especially as that uh, for a three-hour uh, show every week. Yeah, for a three-hour show, uh, and uh, it's it's not a good sign when that deal is closing with Endeavor. They they're going to have to start cutting. Uh, there's definitely going to be employee cuts, and I would not be surprised if there's talent cuts too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar in what will be the third match in this series, and what you imagine would be the blow off. 
the biggest surprise about this is the fact that it's a straight up singles match um yeah. that doesn't really play into the sort of typical style of wwe booking like when they do these three match programs at the very least the last mat last uh match in the program has some sort of stipulation to yeah, it yeah like at least a cage match or something but they're they're not doing that i guess part of that is that they've got um whatever the fuck the tribal combat rules are did they establish what the rules for that thing is because i have no idea it's not really just like anything goes i guess so you know i i guess that's probably why which from a, a production point of view view and pacing fine that makes sense but um it, it does mean that like I think when everyone was thinking about this program and there being the third match in the program, I think everyone just immediately presumed that, all right, this will be a dog collar because uh, that is kind of the, the sort of Cody Rhodes staple. Um, but nope, it's just a straight up singles match. So um, I guess I'll, I'll be curious to see kind of how they put the bells and whistles to this one with that in mind. Um, and then obviously like, the big thing is, does Cody win this match? You would presume he would. But again, stranger things. I hope so. <laughs> He's going to go if the long term storyline is him going to WrestleMania, challenge Roman again. He needs to be Brock. He needs to beat everyone that uh, he's going to face in the next few months. But what if he doesn't? What if he doesn't actually end up facing Roman? What if that was just all a dream in our uh, minds? Then who do you put him with? Then who does Roman face at WrestleMania? I have no idea. <laughs> Either. The long-term story, I am guessing, is him and, and Roman again at WrestleMania. So that's the only story that makes sense based on what they are telling right now. Yeah. And I'm at least giving Triple H the benefit of the doubt in terms of long-term storyline telling. And this, this right now, all this makes sense for Cody to face Roman Reigns again. If not, if not, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> if shame on me for assuming WWE had a long-term cohesive storyline yeah 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 <laughs> uh finally our main event well i presume will be the main event but who the fuck knows roman reigns versus jay uso for the undisputed wwe universal championship and recognition of tribal chief yeah. um so look I, I do think that the build for this has been very very well done uh i you know the match at money in the bank uh, the the reception the pop to to Jay pinning Roman was big as it should have been. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you know they've done all the things there that they've needed to do. Jay does feel very hot going into this. Yeah, the promise he's been cutting it's like it's main event level stuff. I would still maintain you could have done all this and had the belt on Cody the whole time. Yeah, I feel like I we've agree. said that every month for about the last four months now, but it does feel like it's it's worth repeating. You could be building to another Cody Roman Reigns match and still have Cody be champion at WrestleMania this year. You know? All of this makes sense if Cody... All of the, these storylines would still make sense if Cody was champion and Roman was not. Yeah. Because um, really going into this, if you think that Cody is still like the the end result with all of this then there is no way that Jay can win this match yeah um but you would also say that you would look at the way that this has been built up that you would think that Jay has to win this match um and again I, I guess it is a good problem to have that you have these options to play with but I do feel that the end result of this match could have been a little bit more up in the air if if the title wasn't there to begin with and it was just purely the the tribal chief nonsense that they wanted to do yeah. um but i do feel that, that, that there's no way jay can win this match surely they're not going to end it here um i would assume it's jimmy next he'll come back from injury and he'll challenge on reigns and they'll do that match uh but i just i don't think that you know because in, in some ways there's the whole sort of full circle cycle of this coming up going back to when roman originally won the title and and they did the feud with jay to begin with like there's a there's a perfect synergy to that and also just the fact that i think jay is far more a he's far more of a captain captivating performer than jimmy but also he has he significantly less duis than jimmy but you know i digress um so 
you, you could do a short term program where you, you give the belt to Jay to help kind of solidify him to like that next level. And it's always good to have another guy like that. But then does that take the shine off of Cody if you do go back to that next year? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, my feeling is that I, I, I like Jay Uso, but I don't know if the long term storyline is is Roman and Cody. Then I think the rest of the year should be him and Jay, and then Jimmy comes back from the hospital and they feud. And and you know, Jimmy is not as charismatic as Jay. But I still think they can pull that off for a show later in the year. I don't. I don't know when. Maybe Survivor Series. I. I don't know. Um, and then there's probably going to be the solo split. I would assume that that happens after the feud with the Usos. Maybe somebody else will come up. I don't know. But um, you can spend the next. I don't know how long it is between now and WrestleMania. Like eight months or whatever. Just. Having, I think it's actually a little shorter than that. I don't know, um, but uh, you can feud with the Usos and and do all this family drama for going back to Cody for the next uh, few months. So there is something here, but I think it is going to be hard to tell people. Well, maybe Jey Uso can win. Maybe Jimmy. Maybe Solo. Because the, I think people already assume what the WrestleMania match is going to be and. It is unlikely Roman is going to lose the titles before then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that is that is the SummerSlam card overall. Uh, I, I think it's it's a decent enough looking card. It's not the worst SummerSlam I've seen. It's not the best SummerSlam no. I've seen. Um, but I, there's there's enough stuff here that I think this at least will be you know an above average show. Yeah, I think it'll, by the end it'll be a good show. It's just a matter of um how wwe will book which is always how it is it's always people go out there and work hard but if the finishes and the storylines fail them then it's it's not their fault it's wwe's fault but uh these shows in the last few months have been pretty solid to okay to good very good yeah so i think we'll see a good show on on uh on saturday um okay so we're just going head to head with collision by the way that's gonna be fun yeah well that's that's what we've got now now collision is a saturday night show uh we've got this kind of stuff going on um did they announce what is on collision this week it is the main event is cm punk versus ricky starks with uh ricky, ricky the dragon steamboat, steamboat as an yes. enforcer Yes. Is the is the FTR uh, Big Bill Brian Cage match this week or is that next week? It is cl- on collision this uh, okay. Saturday. All right, that's, that's 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 two fairly big matches. I don't know if but FTR that, can be able to keep up their run of like fucking like exceptional tag matches. But I give it a think, go. I don't think it'll be as good as the the previous tag matches, but I think they'll have a good match. Um, yeah. Brian Cage is good, and Big Bill, I, I like he's not bad. Like he, he's he's improved a lot since leaving WWE. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. He's yeah. very much improved, so I think yeah. they'll have a a big uh, they'll have a good match. Yeah, that, that that's a pretty like pretty big uh, 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 collision main event there. Um, yeah, it's I guess it will be interesting to see up against a, a pay per view, like because you know I'm the collision interested. rating has gone up, but it, yeah, I'm interested in that rating because that will be like. Because WWE is going to go head to head with them almost every month going forward. So now it's like, how are they going to do against pay per views? WWE pay per views. How will they go up against WrestleMania next year? So there's going to be a lot of questions about that. Um, I can see them not doing well at all, but they, they are being competitive this week. They're not throwing in the towel. They're they're putting on high profile matches. So we'll see how it goes, but. I don't know. For me, that week uh, Saturday is not going to be fun to cover because I have to. I think somebody's going to cover SummerSlam, and I'm going to end up covering Collision. So at least there's that. Yeah, that's why I'm more worried about <laughs> what the rating is on on uh, Tuesday or whenever it drops. Uh, I'm sure people will lose their fucking minds over it, but uh, whatever. Uh, sure. People lose their minds on Twitter or whatever Twitter is named now over a lot of stuff. 
X. It's X. X. Sorry. Uh, although my my uh, tab says X Pro, so I don't know what the fuck that means. Uh, I, I don't know if, if the reply guy has given me some like special subscription that I didn't pay for. Uh, no, I'm, I, I'm just waiting to give them all my banking information. That's going to work out really well. <laughs> I I finally I got a, a blue sky invite today. I haven't had a chance to set the profile up up yet, but uh, I do have that now at least. So. I have noticed a lot of people since the name change. I've noticed a lot of people have been following me on blue sky. Yeah, that's yeah. not a coincidence. I don't think. Yeah, I, I need to have a look at that and see what, what the lay of the land is, at least. Um, but moving on, uh, speaking of Collision and FTR, uh, the first thing that I want to talk about in regards to July and AEW uh, is a, a string of matches that Cash and Dax were involved with. Um, you had both of the uh, Jay White and Juice Robinson matches on Collision 4 and Collision 5. The, the first one, which was just a, a, a you know an eliminator match that Jay and Juice won, uh, just a really solid like that was a team. really great match. Yeah, I, I think people have completely forgotten about that because of the the follow up. <laughs> it's funny because it was a really good match. Yeah, a, a proper solid, decent like tag title yeah. television match. Uh, but they followed that up the next week with a two out of three falls match um, that went just shy of fifty nine minutes, I believe. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I think didn't Meltzer say it was the best tag team match he'd ever seen on North American television? He did say that. Yeah, uh, just like, you know, look, I, there's a couple of things to take out of this. First of all, the turnaround for Juice Robinson, who, God bless him, but when he came <laughs> into this company... He wasn't he, doing much. He was cold as fucking ice. And he it was. just... We didn't know he, he didn't know where he could fit in with the company. To some degree, you could kind of say the same thing was happening with with Jay. Um, the the feud with him and Ricky Starks just didn't really do either of them no, any favors. Uh, but this has been, you know, just just such a quick resurgence in terms of like letting you know that a uh, Jay White, first of all, is an exceptional wrestler and works very well in North American television because people were like, hey, how's he going to work in front of like you know television wrestling because it's not what he'd been doing up until this point um but also it kind of felt like it was a bit of a resurgence for ftr as well because up until this point you know they've been the tag champs for uh most of this year but i couldn't really tell you anything of significance that they'd done during like their time as champions um but this really felt like the kind of reminder that oh yeah by the way these are one of the best if not best tag teams uh, in the world currently yeah. Um, yeah, uh, the, just, these series yeah. of matches in the last few weeks, uh, the MGF and Adam Cole match was also really, really good. I did uh, have on this as well. Uh, yeah, the, you you put the resume on this month, and the, it's a pretty good resume to be the tag team of the year. I mean, is there anybody else right now that's even close? Um, uh, so like Aussie Open were Aussie, on their way, good. But then- you know, but Davis did have the injury. But then they had that injury. They they, they were on their way though. I, I do agree with that. But then they got injured. And yeah. Now they're 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 back and they're they're finding their footing and um, we'll see like, how the rest of the year goes. They they, you know, they could be in contention. Like I guess Sami Zayn and, and Kevin Owen technically are. Um, they've had some pretty decent matches. They they've have had like, good matches. They've yeah, had the, good matches. The, the, the WrestleMania match was tremendous. You, you, you can t- you, that that was a great match. Uh, you can talk about them. I think. I think in WWE, by far they are. Um, yeah, I mean, you can make a case for them. But they did not have the series of matches that uh, FTR had uh, this month. No, oh, God, no, no. So, um, I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm scrolling up through my list just to see if there's anyone else. But I, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, FTR definitely would be running away with it for the moment. Um, yeah. I've got quite a few matches here with actually with Hiroki Goto and Yoshihashi, but I, I don't think that they're they the quality. Are, they're pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, no, you, you, you're probably uh, you're pretty right because even like the young bucks, they've been they like I'm looking trio stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I do think that uh, it, it probably will be FTR come the, the end of the year. I, I think it'll be a one-two with them, and if um, if Aussie Open are able to keep up their momentum, which they probably will now, I they've think got, they will. I think with them, it will just come down to like who they have to go up against. Um, but they yeah, had I'd... a good match with a Viking on Commander yesterday, and then they had the really good match at Ring of Honor. So yeah, yeah. Um, 
so yeah that is is that but just yeah uh just a, a collection of incredible tag matches and which also just helps to kind of solidify collision um because i think one of the things that most people worried about was a would collision um end up feeling like a b show uh and b would it just end up feeling like an extension of dynamite and i think that across the board in terms of the quality of matches um but also just the pacing of the shows uh, they do feel, they feel just they, they feel different enough to dynamite that it does kind of stand on its own two feet, um, and 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 collision is still like very much like on a Sunday morning. I've I've got it on um, because it's giving me a reason to tune in, and and obviously the ratings at the moment uh, are showing as well that you know people are tuning in for this uh, on a Saturday night. Yeah. Yeah. I mean the the rating was really good last week, so. Uh, I'm not feeling it this week, but uh, I think I think Collision has been a really good show compared to Dynamite. Like, there's been some Dynamites where there's, it's it's good. There's some Dynamites where it's just all over the place, and I'm not into it. Collision has been the one where it's been, for the most part, very consistent in being a really good show. Yeah. So. Now, I have a question for you. And okay. that question is simply this. Adam Cole and MJF, your thoughts? Oh, that's a loaded question. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, I like what, what, it's, what, what they're doing right now. Um, the thing of it is, is that everybody just assumes that eventually MJF is just going to turn on him. Because we've seen this story before. We've seen the story where MJF is friendly with somebody. And they're there. They're friends for weeks, and then MJF just turns on them. We've seen that time and time again. We saw that even recently with... Um, who was it the last time that, that MJF was friends with and turned on? It was somebody uh, recently. Uh, uh, oh, Sammy Guevara. Sammy Guevara. I think that's who I'm thinking of. But yeah, I mean, like... Yeah, there, there's been lots of... Storylines where MJF's friendly with somebody, then they turn on him, or or MJF turns on them, and so I'm see even Adam Cole at, at the very first segments, like I'm just gonna see where this goes, and they have done a good job of making you think that MJF for reals this time is actually friendly with Adam Cole. Now, I don't buy that. <laughs> I. Do, you know, the story would actually be way more interesting if Adam Cole is the one who ends up turning on MJF. And I think you can go with something like that. I think that would be at least far more interesting than what everybody assumes is going to happen is MJF turns on Adam Cole. But for right now, I don't think you should do the turn. I think, I think and in spite of all this, what I've just said, the, the turn has, the, the, uh, the team has gotten over. It's 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 there's merch selling, there's stuff happening, there's people reacting to it loudly, people are losing their minds over a double clothesline. Uh this is a hot act and it's it's gone over and it's shown in the ratings, it's shown in merch. You shouldn't drop it immediately. You should do the Bay Face match at all all in. And then do whatever. See what where what happens in a month. Um, but uh, I wasn't too sure about it at first because I've seen this storyline over and over and over again. But uh, they are, this one's caught fire, and there's something going on here that's resonating with, uh, with people. So you should go with it for as long as you can. And if you want to do the match at All Out, then do the match at All Out. I, maybe wait till full gear. But there's also that CM Punk storyline going on where he says he's the real world champion, and eventually you know that they're go- that MGF and CM Punk are probably going to face again, face each other again. So we'll, we'll yeah, see it's, about that. it's a case of like you've got these two masters to serve. You've got All In, and then you've got All Out a week later. So it's like you've got to book these two shows almost simultaneously, which is not the easiest thing yeah. to do. Um, but it is a problem of their own doing. I will say this. There's a couple of things. First of all, it's going to be very weird for the fact that I think it was back in, I want to say it was like 2013. Uh, I saw Adam Cole 
on uh, one of the very early progress shows when they were still at the Islington Garage uh, before they moved to the Electric Ballroom. Um, their first couple of shows were at the Islington Garage, which held about 300 people, I want to say. Um, so it's going to be a bit wild going from seeing him in front of with 300 people to seeing him with about 75,000 people. Um, so for him, hey, you know, well done, Adam Cole. That's that's quite yeah. the, the, the level of progression. Um, I will say this. If you'd have said to me a month ago that the uh, potentially the main event, but at least one of the matches, the, the world title match on the Wembley show was going to be MJF versus Adam Cole. Um, they, I'm sure they would have, would have had a good match, but I would have also just been like, oh, for fuck's sake, really? Like, of the stadium shows, I put up a tweet the other day about my unfortunate luck when it comes to stadium shows. This would probably oh, have... Oh, I heard about that. I saw that tweet. Yes, that pro- still would have been the best of the title matches I've seen on, seen on a stadium show, yeah. but it wouldn't have been the one that would have been like, yeah, I can't wait. I'm so glad I'm flying over for this. I will say this in terms of the feud or this storyline... I'm at least more invested about this match now than I was then. So on that front, hey, good work to everyone involved. I have some level of investment going into it. It's still not what I would call like the world title match I would have on arguably the biggest wrestling show of all time. Yeah. But hey, look, here we are. You know, you're you're not getting fucking Omega and Punk anytime soon. And whatever else. Um, and you know, there's still potential for other like crazy matches that they all or big like sure, matches. This is the do, first so. of what will be many matches on that show. So. Exactly, exactly. Uh, Tony, knowing Tony, Tony Khan, he's probably going to announce like twelve matches by the end of the, uh, uh, this four week period. So yeah, and and here's the thing as well. Um, I certainly know that like when this storyline started and they were doing the skits and the segments and you had the dance routine and the match and the bits backstage and in the restaurant, blah, blah, blah. There are elements of that um, that you could look at and say that's very sports entertainment and very WWE-esque, yada, 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 yada. Um, and th- there's a couple of ways that you can look at it. Uh, the the very kind of like just black and white is yes, it's very much in that kind of sports entertainment realm. There's nothing to say that AEW can't take elements of sports entertainment and fuse it with the you know the the kind of like hardcore stuff that they do and the more strong style stuff that they do and like that is the beauty of what AEW can be is they can have all of these different flavors compared to WWE, which is purely just a sports entertainment thing. Every now and again, you get two good wrestlers who can just have a good match because they're good wrestlers, but that isn't the focal point. You look at uh, last night's Dynamite, for example, you had the Cole and MJF sports entertainment stuff. You had that fucking ridiculous triple threat match that was just, you know, a fucking wild garbage brawl. You had Ozzy Oban and, and as you mentioned, Commander and and, uh, Vikingo. Vikingo. Yeah, in that, you know, kind of Ring of Honor slash Lucha style sort of tag match. Um, you know, like AEW can be all of these things. I just think that, and I understand why people kind of, anytime that AEW dabble with the sports entertainment side of things, people immediately go, no, you can't do that. There's already a company that are doing that. And it's like, well, what are AEW doing are just an extension of all these other things anyway. There's no reason they can't bring the sports entertainment stuff in. They just have to do it better, which is a low bar to cross, considering what we've had for the last 20 years or so. And, you know, look, hey, the simple fact is, are people in the crowd responding to Cole and MJF? Are they screaming double clothesline? Are they invested? Yes. I'm sorry, but it's working. You know, like you can have issues with the fact that it's just not your thing. That's fine. Obviously, wrestling is purely is a subjective art form in terms of how you appreciate and what you like. But the crowds are fucking responding to it. So it is, you know, like it's not is is it my kind of bag? No. Is is it did I think the match they had a couple of weeks ago was solid? Yeah, it was solid. But I'd have been happy if they moved on to something else. But they have stuck with it, done this thing, got a really good tag match with FTR out of it. And I'm like, all right. Yeah, like I actually actually thought their match at uh, that Dynamite was really good. 
it was it was a very very good match it was probably one of adam cole's better singles matches he's had since uh since uh joining AEW. yeah yeah and also yeah. the wild thing about this as well i put out um a tweet i want to say about two or three months ago it was definitely before double or nothing uh and the tweet was that mjf and brock lesnar had had the same amount of matches in 2023 um either this year or going back over the past like year and a half or so like mjf has barely fucking wrestled in the last two years in this company yeah and now in the span of like a couple of weeks he's had i think at least like three he's, or four he's, yeah like but three or you know four different what? matches and, then and they've the, all been very good the fuck has got his working boots on you know yeah. like it's uh yeah it's i i don't know what the end result is some people are thinking that cole is the one that will actually turn heel and you know, kind of give MJF what's been kind of coming to him for a long, long time, um, which is certainly one way to go. Um, I don't know if I see Adam Cole as AEW champion. I don't think that's a thing that I ever do see. Um, I mean, who else would it be, though? Uh, it's, I, when it comes to who can be MJF, I, uh, you've got, you know, they can play off the punk feud. Um, you could do... Eddie Kingston for a short reign. Like, it, I mean, I think a lot of it comes down to do they continue with MJF as a face and how long for and how kind of much conviction. They need a top baby know? face, and I'm feeling like MJF would probably be the best bet. I think maybe more so than Adam Cole. But I don't, I'm a, I don't know. It's not like a sure thing either. I, I still, there's a part of me that, like, wishes that Paige had never lost the title to Punk um but yeah yeah but hey they have options they have options and look they, yeah, they've they signed do. they've signed a mega punk uh, a mega page and and bucks for uh, uh an uh, undisclosed number of years so they have plenty of time to go back to to that yeah um but yeah like uh in terms of the the wembley show uh or in terms of like aew in general over the past month um the one other thing that off the top of my head that I think is is starting to really click together, Swerve Strickland, the whole mogul affiliates thing, out yeah. of the, the gate with um, Trench and whoever the fuck yeah. the other guy was, the uh, nails. What was his name? Um, the nails guy. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that that Harlan? whole thing. Ah, Parker Boudreaux. Parker, pa- Boudreaux. Parker Bou- Boudreaux. Yeah. Yeah. He's fallen uh, off the face of the earth because he had a match with like uh, Dustin Rhodes. And there was like a tag match on Rampage that just went off the rails. And yes, he's never been on TV since. So I guess no. they gave up on him. Yeah. So they they've done a, a very kind of um, it's taken a while, but they, they've got to the point now that you've got Swerve and they brought in AR Fox, which I think is a really smart thing to do with Fox. Um and you know the continuation with Brian Cage and, and the Gates of Agony, uh, and yeah, I, I feel like Swerve is starting to kind of like get they're, they're clicking with him as where he should be as like this kind yeah. of he's not a top top tier heel, but he's an effective kind of mid card heel that if they want to push up at some point they could do. And uh, they yeah, did a really effect, thing... they did a really effective segment with uh, him, Ar Fox, and Nick Wayne yesterday, where they Absolutely. went to Buddy yeah. Wayne's. Uh, training facility and they just beat the crap out of nick wayne and wayne was bleeding everywhere it was a very strong angle i yeah. thought yeah definitely um so that i think is, is working really well um I'm trying to think if there's anything else that's happened over the past month do i have anything in my star ratings Ooh, do, 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 do. oh oh um, blood and guts yeah oh yeah i guess blood and guts okay <laughs> that, that right. did happen and that okay. was uh Here's, brutal. Here's, here's a thing. Here's a, a hot take for you. I thought Blood and Guts was fine. I thought it was very long. I'm kind of done now for a while with, with the garbage wrestling. Um, There's too much of the garbage wrestling. If I see one more thumbtack spot in the next few weeks, I'm going to be like, ugh. And, and Kurt Cause, cause she it, was a bit, was a bit he didn't look not good. great. Yeah. He didn't look good. I'm yeah. not going to lie. Uh, yeah. Kurt Ibushi looked very old. Which is depressing go- because the man has it always is looked depressing about twenty three. Because he's he's looked <laughs> he's looked so much younger than he actually is for so many years, and I am watching that match, and it's like, oh boy, it's all coming back to him, which is very sad. Yeah, 
But uh, that's what happens. I mean, there's also that thing with Tanahashi. Yeah, but Tanahashi's at least like 47. Like, yeah, yeah fair enough. Um, but yeah, I, I I thought Blood and Guts was fine, but I I wasn't as high on it as some other people. Um, I did think it did a couple of effective things. I thought that for short notice, they were able to find a way to kind of fuse that with the Death Before the Sun match with Pac and Claudio, uh, which I thought was some effective booking to do in, in you know, in the short term. But I just... I, I guess part of it is I was never really too fussed about the elite BCC feud. Um, I always just felt like it was a thing we were doing to kind of tick us over till the next thing came along. And like, I'm far more interested in like the idea of doing John Moxley and Orange Cassidy at Wembley than I am at anything that we've done with the elite and BCC. I might be the only one I might sound crazy, but that's just kind of where I was with it. Yeah. Um, I thought, I mean, I thought the match was excellent. Uh, I know Kodobushi didn't look good, but I mean, there's just a bunch of crazy stuff going on. The Pac move off the um, off the top. Uh, off oh, the, top the, the, double, the mushroom stuff. Yeah, the double. Yeah. Crazy. yeah, that was crazy. Uh, the bed of nails. That was a crazy spot. Uh, the broken glass. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, most of these hardcore matches don't have. And they did bring him in for this match and that made it different which i like but at the same time i kind of just wish all of these war games matches i think they they use too much weapons like they are answering to uh use weapons every time they 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 go with these matches and it's like you, you know some of the best war games matches did not have any weapons everybody just bled and my favorite war games matches are the ones where there's just constant movement going on and people are just bouncing off cages off the cage and stuff like that. And it's like WWE then brought it back. And since they can't bleed, everyone has to use weapons and everyone's coming to the ring with a weapon. And yeah. it's like, that's not what war games is, but whatever. Um, but when you know, this can you was, make when did Kenny Omega decide to be a garbage wrestler as well? This, he's just. I know he's like, like he likes to use weapons now. It's like, like I, I keep going back to the the lights out match that he had with Moxley at uh, I think it was Full Gear 2019, I so. and I remember him doing the Phoenix Splash onto the the exposed wooden boards, and I was like, is this any better or worse than like some of the the more you know? I remember a couple of the the sort of like New Japan matches around like the G1. I remember the one match in particular with Naito where those two just fucking killed each other. And I was like, is is this better or worse than that? I don't know. Is is that better or worse than fucking taking a bump into a bed of nails? Who knows? But Omega operates. On a different God bless I'm not going to find out. No, no. <laughs> Uh, but I think that's it for for AEW. Yeah. Um, we mentioned Death Before the Sonor there. I think it's definitely worth mentioning um, Death Before the Sonor, uh, a pay per view that felt like it came together at the very last minutes. Some of it is like without their uh, without their doing, I guess, because Mark Briscoe got hurt, and Eddie Kingston decided. Uh, well, I mean, he, he asked to do the G one, and he went to go do the G one. Yeah, and as a result, uh, the card got changed a lot, and yeah, it's uh, well, it's a combination of but... that and the fact that no one's watching the um, sweet products because there's no reason to watch. There, there's no reason products. to watch. I'm watching it, and it's like there's nothing being built towards. I mean, the the, the um the Dark Order stuff was built up. But I still don't even really know the reason why. Uh, what's his name decided to leave? Stu Grayson. Yes. Just it was time to wear white just, instead of purple. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's like, as much they, as I've got for you. They are not doing a really. I don't. I don't. I, like somebody asked after this uh, show was like, "What's the point of Ring of Honor?" And it's like I'm watching yeah. these results, these spoilers, and it's like you're bringing in. This is pretty much AEW Dark, but with Ring of Honor. Yeah, I mean, in terms of like the reason that it, it exists, the one thing that you can say is it does mean that, you know, someone like Athena, she she's had one of like the better runs this year. Yeah, um, she has. Like, she's she's on the best run that she's ever had in in terms of like in front of a a, a larger audience, 
And she probably wouldn't have had the chance on the EW just because there's obviously only so many slots to go around. So you could say that a significant portion of the product is completely like a waste of your time. But there are a few, you know, kind of bright sparks there. And so you could make the argument that maybe it is worth it just for that. Uh, I'm, it's not my money. It's not my product. So it's not for me to say. Um, but I will say that, you know, I, I did think the card even though it was put together in such a fucking shoddy fashion, it's probably going to be one of the better shows of the year. And it kind of feels like that is the sort of trend with ring of honor where these, these shows get put together at the last minute. There's no fucking promotion. There's no uh, kind of building towards it, but then you're like, Hey, that looks like a pretty decent card. And then you watch it. And then, you know, it's, it's one of the shows of the year. So it's uh, pros and cons pros, pros and cons indeed. Um, But yeah, I thought that, uh, we were talking about there with Stu Grayson, the six man uh, fight without honor between the Dark Order and uh, the Righteousness. Uh, I, f- I, f- I know we just kind of mentioned there in terms of we're kind of done with like hardcore wrestling, but I think it's nice to see a match like this with a bunch of wrestlers that you don't typically get to see. Um, and I, I, I thought this thing just. <laughs> you could maybe argue it was excessive, but I, I, I fucking love this thing. I. Seeing someone like Eva Luno in a match like this, because we don't get to see him wrestle that often, um, I, I thought that the the violence was justified. I felt that uh, everyone in this match had their working boots on, and uh, this was a, a surprise for how great this, this thing is. This was really this was really good. The problem is that there was an even bloodier match about two days before. Yeah, yeah. So it's it had a a hard um, a hard time following up, but. It was a really good match. Mm. It really was. They worked hard. They definitely worked hard. Pac and Claudio Castagnoli had what I just like to call just like two excellent professional wrestlers just going out, out there and having an excellent professional wrestling match that yeah. isn't like any kind of all timer, isn't any kind of like genre defining, no. but it's just like you give a really Pac, solid good match. You give Pac and Claudio 20, 25 minutes and like i you know one of the the biggest uh, i i don't know the exact specifics behind it i'm sure like maybe one day pack will talk about it but like with the whole pandemic and the kind of there's been this real sort of stop startiness with pack that yeah, some of it is, is gone for a long time well because as far as i'm aware up. as far as i'm aware he um he still lives in Newcastle. Like I think uh, he's never actually moved to the States. So obviously that causes headaches in terms of, of the travel. Role, yeah. Um, but then obviously he was injured this year because of, of the nose injury. The nose, yeah. um, so it has called problems in terms of like booking him and keeping momentum with him. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that this is a start of him just being able to just fucking have patches. Cause like he's so fucking good. And, you know, I still think back to the early days of AEW and him and Omega and Moxley and him being in the mix at the top where I totally think he can be in that position. Like he's and he's still only like 35, it, 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 even more so than Drew McIntyre. It's fucking mad yeah. how young he is. That's I'm surprised he's that young. <laughs> and I just I just think he's such a obviously he's kind of as well like. He's not tall. He's he's quite short, but he's kind of like that Brian Danielson, where the height of him never sort of seems like a factor because he's so fucking built out. Um, and he's got such a character to him. He's become such a good promo. I just yeah, I think there's so much more you can do with him. Um, but obviously, part of it is the logistics of the fact that he he, as far as I'm aware, is still living in England, and obviously he's had the injuries as well. But uh, you know. I'm, I'm hoping now that he's back and and they figure out something to do with him. Um, I'd love to see the, him have the run of the TNT belt at some point, but who knows? Yeah, but there's a lot. T- I, there's a lot of titles <laughs> now. In AW. Um, I don't know the TNT title. Yeah, I guess. But uh, uh, Darby Allen and Luchasaurus are kind of feuding over that title. I guess. I don't know. You you could do it. You you could do uh, um, Darby Allen Darby Allen and Pac. That would be an interesting match. I would go for that match. Thank you very much. I yeah, that would be a fun match. 
So, uh, yeah, I mean, he could. He can go after Orange Cassie for the title. That he, They could do a rematch over that title. There's a lot of options for Pac. It's just like, how long is he going to be here? Is he going to stick around? Because he kind of reminds me of like Riho, where Riho will come in every few months after being gone for months. And then come back and be really good and then just disappear again. So he's kind of doing that kind of thing right now. And I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see uh, where how long Pac stays. Yeah. Uh, and then our main event, Athena defended the Ring of Honor Women's Championship, defeating Willow Nightingale um, in what I think is pretty reasonable to say is the best Ring of Honor Women's title uh, match of all time. Um, yeah. I'll give you two seconds to come up with another Ring of Honor Women's title match that's ever happened. <laughs> Can't think of one. Hey, I'm trying to th- who did Athena beat for the title? Oh, uh, was it Mercedes Martinez? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. All right, then. Was. Fine. Okay. Okay. One sure. of these uh, shows, I, think, <clears throat> I don't think a super card, but maybe the one before that. Okay. Oh, I, it's I, been a I, while. I, I trust you on that. Um, yeah, but this match was just, like, incredible. Uh, it had the emotion. It had the work. It had the the just the the energy um this absolutely deserved to main event the show it had like an actual kind of like more than a week's build to it um people have been talking about that willow nightingale had sort of been uh, not utilized properly in aew again there are only so many fucking spots to go around um but i do think that tk has has kind of taken note of that and uh I would say probably, like, come final battle, maybe they'll do a rematch of this, and that'll be where Willow wins this. But, uh, yeah, the this is one of those things as well where Willow got as much out of this in defeat and got over just as much by losing this match. Um, and, yeah, I, I, I thought this thing was incredible. Yeah, I mean, it was a very good match, a very good main event, uh, probably the best thing on the show. Uh, just a lot of cool callbacks to previous Ring of Honor stars. Um, very, the crowd got into it. It's just as a, um, I don't know. I was kind of hoping that Willow would win, because it made sense for her to get a big title win, and they did not go with that. I, I don't really know why. I guess there's a future idea for Athena as champion, but. Um, I don't know. For me, it's like Willow should get that big title win eventually. I know she's held the strong women's title, but that was kind of like a fluke thing. They should really build her up to a big title win. And I don't think it's going to be the AEW women's title. Maybe maybe the TBS title. I, I don't know. But I, I feel like it should have been that night where Willow got the, the women's title. Maybe they can build towards another match for the next Ring of Honor pay-per-view and maybe she wins. But like... I feel like you have to do that big win eventually, and, and they haven't really done it yet. So, I don't know, but, but it was a good match. It was a very good match. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and overall, just, um, you know, just, it's just a, a, a very solid show. And, yeah. Uh, very easy watch. A very easy watch, yes. Um, much easier than the, the kind of AEW core pay per views sometimes end up being. Yeah, sometimes, uh, like the recent AEW shows have been good, but it's, they're not easy to watch, like uh, like this Ring of Honor show, or for sure. Yeah, it's, uh, un- unfortunately, though, I will say this, um, I can't say that I'm any more compelled to try and tune in to watch the Ring of Honor product every week. Uh, they, they still have that no. issue. There's nothing compelling about the TV show. It's two hours, first of all, which I'm like, why do you need to be two hours? And there's no, there, there's maybe one or two storyline directions, but there's nothing compelling. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're not, they're, they're not doing anything to sell uh, Honor Club or whatever it's called. It's yeah. Not doing anything. Yeah. All right, with that, uh, let us bounce over to New Japan. Uh, first of all, did you see any of the New Japan Strong Independence uh, two did. nights in Oregon? I did 
I did not. I think that went head to head with a bunch of stuff, and I just didn't watch. All right. Uh, I will say this, if nothing else. Um, <laughs> these shows were more or less built around uh, a pair of matches from night one and night two. On the first night, you had El Desperado and Jun Kazaya making officially what I found out was his first match ever for New Japan uh, against the team of Homicide and John Moxley in a doomsday no disqualification tag team match, um, which is then followed up the next night with a final death match between El Desperado and John Moxley. Um, so there was a couple of things coming out of this. Uh, there was the very, very fucking ridiculous death match between Jun Kazai and El Desperado last year. Desperado just at some point decided that he didn't only want to just be like an exceptional junior heavyweight. He also wanted to be an exceptional death match wrestler as well. Um, turns out he's pretty fucking good at it. Uh, so you had the, the relationship between those two going into this. But then also this ongoing feud that Desperado has had with Moxley, uh, stemming from a match they had. I can't remember if it was over WrestleMania weekend or it may have been last year, but I know they had a match stateside at some point that was uh, was like a no disqualification match. And so they've been continuing on that feud, which led to the, these pair of matches. Um, if nothing else, I would say go out of your way to watch the pair of these. Um, they are what you what. Think of what a match with weapons around Corican Hall involving Homicide, John Moxley, El Desperado, and Jun Kazai looks like. It's pretty much like that. Completely bonkers, complete chaos. Uh, the crowd love every second of it. The thing I love about New Japan crowds, and certainly with like the Corican crowd, is that they respond to the product like it's the product from wherever it is. So if they're watching Fantastica Mania, they treat it like it's a lucha show. If they're watching a typical New Japan show, they'll treat it like that. When it's New Japan Strong, they treat it like it's an American product. They chant in English. They do all that kind of stuff. And it's such a it's just it's such a crazy but cool vibe to see them respond in that way. And I feel like they're the only crowd in the world that will would respond in that way. Like I think if you had you know a WWE audience watching uh, a New Japan product. They they pretty wouldn't know even know how to react to it, but that Corican crowd is so smart and they and they know how to respond and get the most to make that product seem like the best That's thing the possible. That's the thing about Kirk and Hog crowds when they go, they know exactly what to do. It yeah, it kind of reminds me of of all things when Impact held um not anniversary uh, Bound for Glory in Tokyo. At Kirk and Hall that one year, I think it was yeah. like in 2015. That was uh, what was it a crossover with was it zero one? Or... Might have been. No, uh, what Wrestle the fuck? One. Wrestle One. That was it. it was uh, uh, I think it was Wrestle company, One company, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. And the audience there did American chants. Well, like they 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 knew what to do. They they were chanting that stuff at people, and it was actually like kind of an interesting show. I think people back then thought like that was like going to be the last Impact show, but they got saved again by somebody. Gantham saved them around that time. Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, Kirk and Hall is for Fantastic Media, like like you said, people will, will be all excited about uh, Lucha Libre and stuff like that. So it's always they they're very smart crowds, and they and they fine tune themselves to the kind of show that they're getting. And that's always that's always really fun to see. Um, obviously, we are in July and we're now into August, which means we are in G1 season. Uh, before I go into my recommendations, I'll just jump to you. First of all, Brian, what have you okay. seen? Well, mine's going to be short because I haven't watched it. <laughs> I swear every day G1, it's like... Either I am busy doing video stuff or I just don't feel like watching or the cards aren't that good because I'm watch I'm seeing the roster for the these this tournament. I was like I'm seeing a bunch of names that are like, do we really need to see this person in the tournament? Like really we couldn't find anybody else like Tom Lawler or somebody that might have been a more interesting pick, but I, I do have a few matches. Um, Eddie Kingston has had a 
really good tournament from what I've seen. He's uh, wrestled Shingo Takagi and Tomohiro Ishii, and those both were great matches. I really liked both of them. Um, Shota Umino and Ren Narita also had a really good match. I have not heard great things about Ren Narita after this match, but um, Shota Umino, I, I, I thought it was a really good match. I didn't think it was like a great match, but they had a really good match. I think it ended in a draw. I, I forget 100% if that's that's what happened, but um, I think uh, I think that was really good. And I went out of my way to watch uh, Will Ostray versus Kazuchika Okada on the 27th. And that was... Dave liked this match a lot. Um, I thought it was good. They did good wrestling for a while. Then they had a hot series of... of uh, of last minute stuff. And I think they're teasing like they're going to a draw, but I think Osprey ended up getting the win, like very close to the bell. Yeah. And, um, that, that it, it, the last few minutes were really good. The rest of the match I, I thought was okay. It didn't blow me away that the match overall didn't blow me away. And they gave it like four and three quarters. And it's like, Okada is, wasn't is... that. No, Okada is one of those wrestlers. <laughs> he's one of those rare wrestlers that wrestling under twenty minutes does not suit his style. He's one of the no. very few wrestlers where he, he he has to go plus twenty to get like yeah, you know, to to what ends up being usually a four and a half star match with him. Yeah, um, yeah, but he's one of the very few wrestlers that fits into that mold. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that's about all I have watched. Um, the only other stuff I've heard is that Evil is doing his, his shame, same shtick again, and it's not good. Um, I've heard conflicting things about the younger talent. I don't think they've scored a lot of points, and I kind of feel like you should be giving them more. But I, I, again, I haven't watched the tournament, so you will have a better idea of that than, than I would. Yeah. But I do think... I do think it's time we start giving the younger wrestlers a push because the, the the ones that are on top right now are kind of like breaking down and it's kind of time to start pushing new and younger talent. I don't know if them getting a bunch of losses in G1 are like, is like a great thing. Um, I, you know, there's, there's a couple of ways you can look at it. Um, you know your your Renneritas, your um, Yotsujis, your Shota Uminos, they're around for the long haul. And yeah. New Japan doesn't book in uh, you know like short bursts. They they have long term plans. Um, it could be five fucking years till like Yotsuji wins the the heavyweight title. Um, and that's just the way that they've done things. And for the most part, it's over the past like ten years or so, it's worked out pretty well for them. Um, certainly. You look at guys like uh, Tanahashi and Naito. Um, yeah, I guess you could have even said Abushi if he was still around. They're certainly in the the kind of twilight of, of their their careers now, um, and you do need to get them into a position where you know the younger guys are beating them. And and you know someone like Tanahashi at this point is Teflon. You can beat him all day long, and he's still Tanahashi. Um, I do think that at some point you'll probably have like. A very significant where like a, a whether it's like a wrestle kingdom or something where you know those guys will pick up those those key victories um it just obviously isn't happening yet um and part of that is because you do have you've kind of got like these three generations um you've got the guys like uh tanahashi and naito uh, um, and even i guess like in like a shingo uh, god bless him and ishii where they're you know they're what New Japan has been. And then you've got the current crop. You've got Okada, Osprey, uh, Sonata, obviously, as the champ. Uh, you've got a bunch of guys here. And then you've got the guys that are coming up. You don't have to be pushing those guys right away because you do still have this kind of current crop and you need to do everything with them. But you can get them into a place where they eventually will be where the likes of Okada are now. Um, but it's just the way that New Japan book. Like, nothing is done... Nothing is done by accident. Everything is done deliberately, but it does take time. And considering that this is the first G1 for a bunch of people, I was never expecting, um, you know, uh, a show to Umino to win. Because partly because no. 
I think with Shota Umino, he still needs to figure out who the fuck he actually is because he's about three different wrestlers all in one. Yeah. Um, he still needs to find that kind of uh, more of an identity. I think Yoshiyuki is somebody who's who's found what he he is really fast, but Umino yeah. not so much. But the thing I will say, not so much for for Ren Rita at this point, but at least for Yota and and for Umino, I think they've had very good tournaments. Uh, even yeah. though they you know obviously haven't done so great in terms of the booking, in terms of like winning, yeah. I think they've actually they've performed exceptionally well, uh, and and they've you know, showing themselves that they're very capable at this stage. And I think that is just as important than anything else, because there are plenty more G1s in the future where you can fucking, you yeah. know, like, decide, all right, we're going to strap the rocket to one of them, then do it. Like, so I'm not worried about that kind of thing. Um, in terms of this particular G1, I think that the format of having, I think it's like 32 men they've got in this, you can certainly make the argument that it's too many people and as such you've got a bunch of wrestlers in there like you know you've got fucking mikey nichols and shane haste who probably shouldn't really be in this tournament they're, they're both fine wrestlers and you know when you have like the tag league they're good for that yeah. for a g1 eh, I'm, I'm not too sure but you know you do it does mean that the um the actual schedule is way less gr grueling for these guys you know That's you're true. only having You've only got six matches before you're hitting the quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals. Um, so I do think from that aspect, this format works out really well. It hasn't actually been particularly grueling for me to, to kind of catch up and watch most of it. Um, but I think that they even need to... They either need to do this tournament again, but have it with like six wrestlers per bracket, or they just need to, I don't know, like have more imports or something there's a way that this can be done where this particular t uh, kind of format works um but i do think that you there's just a couple of you know it's not like chase owens who i get why he's there and while they'll always he'll always be like a mulligan where they'll always like give him the opportunity because of you know what he's done for them in the past but I don't need to see fucking Chase Owens in, in a G1. I just, I just don't. Like, yes, there are people that need to be there to take, like, pins. But, I mean, if it wasn't him, it'd be fucking, like, Takahashi. So, you know, whatever. Um, for me, though, in terms of, of matches to recommend, the tournament actually started pretty slowly. There's nothing really from the first couple of nights. Um, it wasn't until, for me, I got to night four. Uh, Shingo Takagi and Hinari had a had a. I did a, hear a, that was good. Match. Yep. Um, Kaito Kiyomiya and Shota Umino I thought was really strong. Kazuchika Ricardo and Taichi had probably probably my favorite match of the tournament so far. Um, Taichi is someone I found to be super super underrated over the last couple of years, and he's he, going to be a really good performer. He I wrestles, liked him much more as a heavyweight than a junior yeah, heavyweight. Yeah, and he his wrestles junior in heavyweight run was, wasn't great. He wrestles in a way so differently from so many other wrestlers, where like especially at the G one, he had that much with, match with Kota Ibushi a couple of years ago, where they just kicked each other for twenty five minutes. Yeah, and I fucking love that match. And yeah, I not to say that I think Taichi should have been the one to win the belt instead of Sonata, but I don't know. I feel like there's still something more you could do with with Taichi. Um, Especially because he's also like in his early to mid forties at this point, so the clock's ticking with him as well. Um, yeah. Sonata and Kiyomiya was really good. Uh, Tomohiro Ishii and Eddie Kingston, surprise, surprise, they hit each other really hard. That was great. Um, and I thought Jeff Cobb and Zack Sabre Jr. out of their series of matches, this was the one I've, I I enjoyed the most. Um, so yeah, there's a bunch of matches. I think the twenty minute format works really well. Like no match outstays its welcome. Uh, no card outstays it's welcome and uh yeah overall there, there is some good stuff to find there if you want to you know if you've not had a chance to catch up on any of it go on cage match that'll give you the, the easy recommendations um it's not the best g1 ever you know like that those like golden years sort of 2012 to 2017 2018 uh it's not reaching those highs but it also probably means that these wrestlers aren't fucking killing themselves to the degree they were during those years so you know push and pull yeah um, and I think uh, the the one very last thing uh, I saw the opening night of um, the uh, five star Grand Prix because there's about twelve different fucking round robin tournaments going of on. We've got, 
no Zen one starting this week. Uh, it's it's just insane. Um, night one of the tournament, um, Siri and Suzuki, Suzu Suzuki and Julia Suari Anu. Uh, I both gave four and a half stars. Uh, really, really strong. Um, the the pacing of the five star tournament is kind of wild because it takes like forever to be done because there's just like such a long break between their shows compared to the G1. Um, so that is actually in some ways easier to stay on top of, but also harder because you kind of forget when the next show is going to happen. Um, but as always, the big uh, uh, stardom shows, they're always worth checking out. Um, the production on those shows are great. And uh, yeah, everyone works really hard. So that is that. So with all that said... I, I didn't watch it. <laughs> I don't have time. I know. I know. It's okay. I don't it's have okay. time. I get it. Sorry. But with all that said, first of all, Brian, uh, who is your wrestler for the month of July 2023? Uh, can I just choose FTR? Because I think those series of matches they've had with uh, with the Juice and Jay White and then the match with Adam Cole and MJF, which was also excellent um they are without a doubt one of the best tag teams in the company right now and probably in the world uh there's not there's one or two teams that are maybe in talks for that but uh ftr is i I feel like is the clear leader and they had a series of great matches this month that that is a entirely reasonable choice and i would also be in agreement that ftr uh ran away with it for, for this month for sure Next up, your match of the month of July. Oh, I actually gave like two five star matches, and it was the two out of three falls FTR match, and then I also gave five to to uh, the the blood and guts match. I thought it was excellent. Really? Okay. Yeah, but uh, I would go with FTR and Jay White and Juice Robinson because that was, I think, a more athletically pleasing match than the blood and guts match which was a lot of weapon spots and and things like that that was just a a marathon of really good wrestling and really good storytelling and when you can make a 50 plus minute match not feel like 50 minutes that's a really 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 good match so i would go with that yeah uh yeah i i would definitely go um with with uh the bang bang gang and uh an ftr um you know probably ftr's best match since the dark collar match with the briscoes um and i i don't know what the long long-term play is with with juice and and jay but um i i think that you you with this you if you want to kind of push jay to that next level in terms of like a top tier heel um or if they want to you know at some point do jay and and punk um, I think this is a great kind of platform for him, and it's, it's definitely pushing to that next, that next level. And again, just FTR. Like, I wish Dax would shut the fuck up more often and just wrestle. <laughs> but what are you gonna do? Uh, well, can you do? Yeah. Uh, and finally, what is your promotion for the month of July, twenty twenty three? I don't know. <laughs> I guess AEW by default, but like. Probably because I like collisions so much most weeks. I think probably based on that alone. There's some dynamites this last month where I didn't think it was strong at all. Mm. But um, I don't know. Uh, WWE, their TV is okay, but not. I, there's nothing where I would go like this is the best, best promotion of the month. New Japan, I haven't watched enough of, and everything else is like kind of just there. So I would go with AEW, probably by default. Uh, just by sheer volume of content and, and how much of it I've seen, um, I think there's enough there to go with New Japan. I guess part of it is if you want to kind of merge New Japan and New Japan Strong together, um, yeah. kind of in the way with like WWE and NXT. Um, but between those two shows, the the New Japan Strong shows and the the amount of G1 content, even though it hasn't been the best G1, there's still plenty of, of good stuff there. So I think I'll I will go with New Japan. Um, but that is it. That is it for another month of a um, AEW. There's a month of the grab up. Jesus. Um, next month will be interesting because by them, uh, All In will have taken place. I will have been there live. 
so I'll uh, have the opportunity to talk about that and, and how that show was uh, from a live perspective, which will be good fun. Um, also, it will be an interesting month because I'm now traveling for the most of August, which means that um, by the time we do this next show, I'll have either had tried to catch up on about three to four weeks worth of wrestling in a very short period of time, or I will have watched none of it at all. Um, so I guess we'll see what happens. We'll see. <laughs> Interesting next month then. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be rough. Um, but I'll probably yeah. have a couple of days where I'll do absolutely fuck all. Uh, the the I biggest, might, might the biggest show of the month is going to be all in and you're going to be there. So we'll, we'll get that. Yes. Sure. Yes. I guess we'll have that and we will have summer slam. So there That's will be summer something. Slam. There, there, uh, there will be stuff. And at the very least, I will find time to watch the G1 finals as well. Um, so, yeah, we will all have some stuff. But that is it until then. Uh, as always, I am a Lithium Project on Twitter. Brian is at BR26. I always think nine, but it is 26. Um, maybe <laughs> at some point we'll start adding in threads and blue sky and God knows what else. But yeah. I'm not quite there yet. So um, that is it for then. Thank you very much for listening. And uh, yeah, we'll see you again next time for another installment of The Grab Up. Bye.